Maine, New Hampshire, America have gone on the mend. They're on the, they're not on the mend any longer. They're on the move. And we're coming to audit at our challenges from position of strength. Did you discuss with the allies today about Ukraine? New Hampshire. Really? I'm here to talk about New Hampshire. I understand. I didn't think you should make money while you're in office. But anyway, it's estimated that the driving on those roads, those 700 miles, roughly 700 miles, that need repairs cost New Hampshire drivers at least an average of $476 a year extra in gas and repairs and longer commute times. That's a $476 hidden tax on New Hampshire drivers. And the second big reason for inflation is Vladimir Putin. Not a joke. The state of Florida and our pension system, we have shares of Twitter. Uh, I didn't buy it. We have people that run the fund. But nevertheless, it hasn't exactly been great in returns on investment. It's been pretty stagnant for many, many years. Uh, so, but nevertheless, I mean, to me, I think that that's probably an injury to the fund. So we're going to be looking at ways that the state of Florida potentially can be holding these Twitter board of directors accountable for breaching their fiduciary duties. So stay tuned on that. Um, David had asked you earlier about um, some comments the president made earlier today about more artillery yeah. going to Ukraine. If you can provide some details about that. And then on the additional platform. I thought I did. Did you? I thought my answer was pretty comprehensive. No? Really? I, th I thought you did. But you didn't think I did either? Provide details? Yeah. On, on the next package? Yeah. Not well, I told you I'm not going to do that. I specifically said I'm not going to get ahead of, of future announcements. Now look. Uh, <laughs> I'd also like to make another announcement before we get into the subject of today's program. I think, as many of you know, the Florida legislature is meeting this week uh, to consider the congressional reapportionment plan for Florida for the next 10 years. Uh, and that is what they've been called upon to do. But I am announcing today that we are expanding the call of what they are going to be considering this week. And so, yes, they will be considering the congressional map, but they also will be considering termination of all special districts that were enacted in Florida prior to 1968, and that includes the Reedy Creek Improvement District. And I want to thank Speaker Sprouls and Senator Simpson for not only working, obviously, for the reapportionment, but for uh, stepping up and making sure that we make the sunset, the termination on those special districts happen, which I think is very important. You you got completely hosed in the debates, as I recall. Yeah. And I think you said something at the time on stage, like, hello, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> what's your reaction to the decision by the RNC to say uh, no thanks? Yeah, I, I don't blame them. You know, as, as you said, having been on that stage and hearing, you know, kind of the, the rhetoric coming from the organizers and, and the mainstream media news channels, Channels they partner with, like, oh, this is going to be fair. This is unbiased. All the candidates will get an equal shot. That's BS, Laura. I think, in, on average, on every debate that I participated in, usually they went two hours. Maybe I got seven total minutes of talk time on there to say that this is an unbiased, you know, service to the American people, upholding our democracy. It's all, it, it's nonsense. Really, what it is is political theater that's being organized by the propaganda arm of permanent Washington establishment. The, the Democratic Party elite. So, you know, good for the Republican Party for uh, walking away. By the way, looking at the things the Republican Party was asking for, very reasonable requests, very reasonable requests. And the fact that they rejected them kind of shows their hand about their bias. I grew up in a family where the price of gasoline went up at the pump was a discussion at the kitchen table. We can do a lot of these things without raising a single penny on taxes of anyone making less than $400,000 a year. Nobody making less than four hundred thousand dollars will see a single penny in their taxes raised. With the Border Patrol releasing these new images, saying a record two hundred twenty-one thousand migrants crossed into the U.S. last month, local officials expect that could soon double. 
numbers like that would be completely overwhelming to our community. The Department of Homeland Security estimates more than 170,000 migrants are waiting in Mexico, planning to cross when Title 42 is lifted May 23rd. What do you need from the Biden administration between now and May 23rd? Um, plans would be helpful. And officials here worry that if the numbers get too high, it could overwhelm the bus station, the shelters, leaving people with nowhere to go and sleeping on the street. We're asking them to reconsider, you know, lifting the uh, Title 42. We're talking about, you know, the deputies uh, dressed in their in their riot gear with uh, uh, their shields and their, their helmets. And The Biden administration is facing bipartisan criticism of its immigration policy, with 1.7 million illegal border crossings last year, an all-time record. People continue to wear masks on planes. That's up to them. You said about this mask ruling out of a federal court in Florida that it's a disappointing decision and you say you continue to recommend that people wear masks. <coughs> Why is it that we can sit here in the White House briefing room with no masks, but people can't sit in an airplane cabin with no masks? Well, Peter, I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. That I'm aware of. If you're a doctor, I wasn't aware of that today and until today. Right. Okay, not a doctor. Just. Well, you're the press secretary. You know how government works. That's a snarky answer. The answer is we respect the opinions of the federal judiciary, including that of a federal judge in Florida, but that's not what you said. I think everyone here recognizes how extraordinary space is, whether it is satellites that orbit the Earth, humans that land on the moon, or telescopes that peer into the furthest reaches of the universe. Space is exciting. It spurs our imaginations. And it forces us to ask big questions. I've met with leaders from around the world, countries like Singapore and France, Behran and India.